One real upside of playing the number one team in the country, prop bets galore, my friends. And let's talk about Brady Cook's obvious upward trajectory coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150. If your team wins, visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. And I want to get started here today. We'll, we'll get to the prop bets. No question about that. Our friends over at FanDuel have plenty of them for us. But I actually want to start here on today's program just talking a little bit about Brady Cook's trajectory. Because as a quarterback, we've seen this a lot in the NFL in particular. And well, the SEC is essentially the minor leagues, if you will. It's about as close to NFL football as you're going to get. And what I'm saying is we see this phenomenon a lot where a backup quarterback will maybe come in, take the league by storm for a start or two, maybe even an entire season. But then the second time around the block, it seems like the rest of the defensive coordinators, they've had an entire offseason to digest what a quarterback does well and does not do well, and then the book is out, if you will. The game plan is out, and suddenly that quarterback may find himself, if not out the league, certainly not starting for much longer. Well, it's been the exact opposite with Brady Cook. Of course, physically, he's obviously much more healthy this season, but it's not as though really, in my opinion, his arm strength does not look dramatically different than it did last season. Now, I think his mechanics, he's admitted that he probably got into some different mechanical habits last season to compensate for his torn labrum in the 2022 season. I think he spent a lot of time in the off season working on his mechanics, and I'm sure they've gotten better, but I, I, I haven't seen a markedly different different arm strength in terms of Brady Cook. That's just me. I could be wrong there. The point here is that I think, if anything, what has set Brady Cook apart this season from last season is just his confidence, his knowledge of the playbook, his ability to anticipate throws and to anticipate what the defense is doing. Also, he's just been a more aggressive player this season, I think, because of all of those factors. Just having another seat, just having a full season under your belt of experience as a starting quarterback in this league. I just think it's incredibly important. And not only that, I think actually next season, I expect an even better version of Brady Cook as Missouri starter, which does bring up an interesting question, right? What about Sam Horn? Here's a kid who probably expected to be starting right now. Does he end up looking to transfer next season? Well, I think more often than not under normal circumstances, a, a star, four-star kid, quarterback out of high school like him almost certainly would, but he does have the baseball factor as well. Perhaps he's comfortable with his baseball environment like ne right now. Missouri has obviously afforded him the opportunity to play both sports. So to me, it's not as cut and dried with Sam Horn's situation next year as it might be for a lot of different quarterbacks who are not a, a two-sport star. But the bottom line is Brady Cook has obviously had an excellent season for the Tigers this year. I'd say he's at worst, what, third team All-SEC right now at quarterback? I'd probably vote him second team after LSU's Jaden Daniels if I had a vote. 
But you know what? Again, I think Brady Cook, I really think he's going to be even better next season. But you know what? I think we'll probably have to see the best version of Brady Cook on Saturday against Georgia to get a victory without question. And I think one thing, one factor you do have to think about here is that this is this is a, what Bill Simmons calls a, the kitchen sink game for Missouri, meaning you throw everything out there but the kitchen sink. And you might be thinking, hey, maybe it's time for another fake punt by Missouri this week or something like that. Well, I definitely have talked a lot about special teams and how that is, I believe, a concern. Just I think Georgia's superior depth to basically every team in the country really, I think, shines through on their on their punt teams and their kickoff teams in particular in my opinion. But if you think that Georgia is going to be bringing a lot of punt rush, as my worry was leading into this, it seems like Missouri gets a punt blocked by Georgia about every other season. I haven't actually gone back and looked at those stats. That's just my memory here. But it seems like if Missouri gets a punt blocked in a season, it's often by the Georgia Bulldogs. But I was actually texting back and forth yesterday with Clayton Baker, the former Missouri cornerback from the 1990s, and he was saying, obviously he agrees with me, he says special teams have to be special. He says, I just don't think Georgia will be quick to block a kick after watching the Kentucky game. I feel they will play it safe. They will set up the return majority of the time. And you know what? Great point by Clayton Baker there, in my opinion. Had not thought of that, but as soon as he said that, I was going, you know what? That makes all the sense in the world because that is a big benefit to faking a punt, especially when you do it successfully as all of a sudden the other team is going, ooh, not so sure I want to bring the rush so heavily anymore. I can remember a few seasons ago where Tommy Townsend of the Kansas City Chiefs through kind of a rocket, really, on a, on just a comeback route to the gunner, sort of similar to the Luke Bauer play, except it was like a ten yard hitch instead of just a you know a a, a, a a nine route, a go route to Marquise Johnson. But at the time, I was thinking, gee, we use this in kind of a meaningless moment here against the Jacksonville Jaguars in the regular season. Why not save that one for the playoffs or something like that? Well, I think the thinking there is that hey. Now the other team's gunner has got to have his head on a swivel. He's going to be a little bit less worried about this, that, and the other. And more importantly, maybe, again, the special teams coach, the head coach of the opposition, suddenly, if they have a good punt block, they're going, "Mm, let's maybe save that one for another week and go with punt safe. Obviously, Missouri can ill afford to lose the turnover battle against Georgia. So, to me... I think that's a great point there by Clayton Baker and just shows you the real chess match there that happens not only on offense and defense, but of course, special teams as well. And coming up on the show, yes, we've got plenty of prop bets when the number one team is facing off against the 12th ranked Missouri Tigers, according to the college football playoff rankings. LSU fans were none too pleased about being 14th behind Mizzou. And, well, I can kind of understand their beef there, obviously the head-to-head matchups. But, obviously, if Missouri contends, continues to win out, LSU continues to win out, heck, going to be a rematch there in the SEC title game, so it would seem. Obviously, a long, long way to go for that. The odds of that are... Aren't the greatest in the world, but hey, speaking of odds, again, just prop bets galore here in this Missouri-Georgia game, including by the great Georgia second-string tight end, the one and only Mr. Oscar Delp. So yes, FanDuel Sportsbook definitely knows what's up if they're talking about Oscar Delp. I can guarantee you that. But you know what? They also know everything about the National Football League as well. So score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. Again, that's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is incredibly easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So 
Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Now again, just props galore over at FanDuel Sportsbook, including, of course, player passing touchdowns, rushing yards, receiving yards, anything you can possibly imagine. But some of the stuff that I like to look at is, is really the simplest. Let's look at, hey, receivers in the ball game, for instance. They're over under the totals. Lad McConkey has just come back for Georgia, I think, in a big way. He looked 100% his very explosive self, really, against Florida last week. That's obviously big news and a big deal for the Bulldogs. At the same time, his 60 and a half over under, I would probably stay away for that and actually say Dominic Lovett, believe it or not, 65 and a half yards. For his production this year, that's actually a pretty high number. And that tends to make me think in terms of game theory when it comes to analyzing, hmm, what's the sports book think here? They're kind of almost begging me to go under. I would tend to want to go over in terms of game theory. Also, just in terms of my analysis of the ball game, I think that Georgia is going to try to get love at the ball and not just to, I don't know, prove a point or something because he's a former Missouri player, but because in the slot, that's a spot that Missouri has been relatively weak in compared to the outside. Now, I'm expecting Enix Rakestraw maybe to be on Lovett a decent bit in that ball game, or against McConkie if he slides into the slot on occasion, though, I don't know, 80%, 90% of last week, he was definitely on the outside against Florida. So we shall see there. It just seems more likely that Lovett is the one who maybe gets more target volume than Lad McConkie in this game. Also interesting to see that Luther Burden is at nearly 100 yards, his over-under in this game, 97 and a half yards. That just shows that even against a top 10, top 5 type Georgia defense here nationally, Luther Burden is just expected to eat once again. He's just that type of player. And the reason why I said he was going to be the best offensive player on the field, had some Georgia fans push back and say, actually, they thought Lad McConkey would be the best player on the field. I- I'm still going to go with Luther Burden. I- I'm not trying to insult McConkey whatsoever. He's actually a really, really good player. I think he's probably an NFL player too. I just think that Luther Burden is more like a first round pick someday. Another interesting play to me, if you really think that Missouri has a chance to win this ball game. Again, as I've analyzed this, I think it's going to be a a relatively low scoring game if Missouri wins it. I I don't think it's going to go over the total of 54 and a half because Missouri, I, I just don't see a shootout. Let's put it this way, especially one that Missouri wins. So with that in mind, I'm not just going to take the money line plus 500. No, let's parlay it together with the under 54 and a half. And that gives you a pretty doggone little good same game parlay over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Bet a dollar, win $10.87. So nearly 11 to one odds on that. I I just, again, it's hard to see a a 35-30 Missouri victory. Could I see Missouri winning 20 to 17, something like that? A little bit more of a lower scoring game, kind of like, when Auburn almost pulled off the upset a few weeks ago at Jordan-Hare Stadium. That's just something I visualize, and I just think it's worth worth getting maybe a little frisky and creative there with the same game parlay. Again, the under and the Missouri money line if you really want to get crazy and think the Tigers are going to win this baby outright. Certainly not impossible whatsoever. Is it unlikely? Yes. Is it 12-1, to 11-1 to unlikely? I don't know about that. I actually like those odds. And finally, this isn't really a a suggestion for a bet. This is just more of an observation. We look at Dejuan Edwards, the Georgia running back, 90 and a half is his rushing total. Cody Schrader, 67 and a half. And a lot of times the team that wins sort of, hey, you run the ball out in the fourth quarter, that type of deal. It's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy in a way. So Almost, I would like to. I would almost like to see a first half sort of total there. Let's just think about that. If 
Cody Schrader is able to rush for, say, more than 40 yards in the first half, and the Tigers hold Dejuan Edwards to under 40 yards in the first half, well, I think you're probably looking at a pretty good ball game there at halftime. Let's put it that way. And with basketball about to get underway once again, uh, so much exciting times happening for Dennis Gates and company and Eli Drinkwitz and his football program as well. But of course, we have to look to the future and let's talk about the link to Link Academy in Branson, Missouri. Seems like a lot of really talented guards might be coming the Tigers way via that Branson pipeline. So let's talk about that. Another top 20 kid visiting this time for the 2025 class for the Missouri basketball team. Uh, some exciting times. We'll talk about that here in just a little bit. But first, I want to tell you that passion, drive, and patience, what brings home the winning trophy, is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it, level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Recently, it was said that Aaron Rowe, who is a point guard, the 2025 class, Missouri and Dennis Gates have been on this young man for a long time. He was at Link Academy in Branson last year. Well, the news is apparently he is moving back to Columbia and going to play for Father Tolton High School here in Como. So that's definitely an interesting development. Obviously, Dennis Gates will be able to keep an even closer eye on that young man would seem to be a good thing for his potential recruitment to the Tigers. Can't hurt, right? <laughs> I guess if he really hated Missouri, he probably wouldn't be moving to Columbia. I guess I'd put it that way. But again, a top 20 kid. How about another top 20 guard in the 2025 class? Another kid from Link Academy, Jasper Johnson, a little bit bigger than Aaron Rowe at six foot four, also listed as a point guard. Those are two two guys that I'm sure could play together at the same time here if they potentially signed in the same class. Obviously, Dennis Gates has shown he's not afraid to play two point guards, two lead ball handlers at the same time. And honestly, I'm a huge fan of that. We saw the 2012 Missouri team played Phil Pressey and Marcus Denman together a lot, although Denman, not a true point guard, of course, but definitely more of that size. Obviously, they were effective together. Mike Dixon, throw him into the mix as well. So Jasper Johnson, a kid who's ranked 19th in the country, according to rivals. So my goodness, we've already basically we've wrapped up the 2024 class here. That's going to be a top 10 national class at the very least. If Missouri adds Jaden Quaintance to the fold. He just visited Kentucky recently. He's the kid who reclassified to 2024. He should be a part of the 2025 class as well, but he sort of went the Jonte Porter route, classified, reclassified, is going to graduate high school a year early, evidently. So if Missouri gets him, and man, I've seen some recent video of that young man who just turned 16 years old this summer. Athletically, he is just on another level from most people at his size in particular. It's just, man, he, he'd be an excellent addition, but it sounds like if Missouri doesn't add him, they'll probably roll that position, that, that spot on the roster over to next year, use it on a transfer portal guy or maybe a, another high school prospect for the 2025 class. But obviously, things continuing to progress well for Dennis Gates and company. It would seem that that momentum on the recruiting trail is just going to continue along as long as this 23-24 team here 
has a good season that I'm expecting, I'm expecting another NCAA tournament appearance. That, those are my expectations right now. I'll have a better idea, of course, after next week when Missouri plays Arkansas Pine Bluff on Monday and Memphis on Friday. So you know what? Thanks, as always, for joining me here on Locked on Mizzou, making this show your first listen every day. I'll see you all tomorrow with my final and official pick for the Missouri and Georgia game right here on Locked on Mizzou.